Hey, St. Luke family, our loved ones, our well wishers, our friends. This is Pastor T.C. Johnson. We're here at the St. Luke Christian Church. God is a good God. God is worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and of all of the praise. As I look back over just my life, I'm a walking, living testimony to, to God can do something. God can use whatever he wants to use for his glory, to glorify him. If you're an overcomer, if you're one of the ones who can declare that in all these things you have victory, in all these, all things, that you, you stopped, you got into a place where you stopped trying to stop trouble from getting to you because you realize that that possibility is very faint. And you realize that God allows the hedge down where in a way or opens in a way just going to be helpful. So every battle I've had had made me a better warrior. Thank you, Lord. Every struggle I've gone through have made me stronger. Thank you, Lord. I mean, I didn't like them. I didn't want them. I didn't ask for them. But I understand God now in a way that I know that God uh, will not allow that stuff. Uh, you and me knock me down. I might knock me out, but I'll get up. I'm glad. I'm glad about that. I'm glad God moves the hedge and allows stuff to get to you. I'm thankful that He doesn't do it every day. That He doesn't do it often. But a lot of times, in order for me to grow, He has to send a a headwind to push me, so it take more strength to to go forward. Every now and then, listen, my brothers and sisters, somebody, you're in the sound of my voice. Don't don't worry. Don't be weary. You're just in a headwind. I know it seems like you're not getting anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You're just in a headwind. Keep straining at it. Don't give up. Don't sit down. Keep pushing. Amen. Toward being what you know God wants you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Want you to be. Life is kind of like archaeologists. Sometimes you have to dig. Thank you, Jesus, to get to the goods. Amen. It's word and worship time, and we're going to have um, prayer and a little worship. We thank God for that. We thank God for being able uh, to be able to worship um, virtually, to work together virtually. I'm struggling with this idea of fellowship, but I, a number of things have occurred, and I know it's good right now that we don't take too many, many chances, but I'm so glad we're back at service at 930 on Sunday, I'm kind of concerned, concerned with young adults in that college age group because we want to be able to touch them. And so we're going to be working on the how that. If you've got some ideas, make sure you just send them in to members at stlukechristianchurch.org. Give you a suggestion for how we can do it and what we can do to reach out to our, our college level students. St. Luke, you've been good to college level students. Those students that have come through here, many have called back, many have sent cards back. You've seen them on some video clips of talking about how uh, St. Luke was such a blessing to them. You just don't know. You do not know how many you touched um, as it relates to those young people in more ways than one. It wasn't just the feeding of the service. It was the feeding of the soul and the spirit. They often come back and reflect upon. One young lady called me to be on a conference, and she said, you know, what I've done in this book she's written, she said, you know, you taught us most of this. Amen. Listen, we thank God for you, St. Luke. It is, it, is, it is prayer time. I want you to lay what's on your heart, what's on your head, what's hurting you. Lay it on your heart. Lay what you want God to handle on your heart. And you may be one of those days where, you know, the song says, um, I've had some good days. He is the climb. All of my good days. Outweigh my bad days. This may be one of those good days. Outweighing all your bad days. Then lay some praise. God, I just want to praise you. Lay some thanksgiving on your, on your heart. In fact, it's kind of the Lord's prayer goal in a way that, you know, we are to thank God before we ask God for anything. And I realize sometimes we're hurting so bad, we're in such dire straight, we go straight to the problem. For God help me with this hurting thing. I understand that. But I tell you what, if you learn to do, if you learn to just praise God, coming to God knowing that he's not um, panic, 
Nothing that you have is too hard for him. Come to him and just thank God for being God. God, I thank you for being God. I know you saw this thing coming. And here I am, God, because it seems like I cannot handle it. Lay whatever it is on the altar of your heart. Amen. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray about it. We're going to pray about it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Because you first love me. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Made me a song. Oh, I love you, Je Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Because you first love me. Father, here we are again. We come into your presence and homes over this virtual world, God. We come asking that you have your way, let your will. We come saying thank you, God, for goodness and mercy that we did not earn and do not deserve. But you keep bestowing upon each of us. You keep. We say thank you, God. Have your way. Let your will be done. Let your name be glorified in Jesus. Father, your name is glorified in Jesus. Who you are and who we see Jesus glorified lifts you up above all. Loving enemies, yet while we were sinners, that lifts you up. That glorifies, that magnifies you. The heart, your heart, God, to be able to love those who are disobedient, love those who even don't believe in you. You let the rain shine on the just, the unjust alike. Thank you, God. Father, you know our prayer list. We've been praying for people some. God, we ask you to bless those who are bereaved, lift up, and give comfort to those whose hearts are heavy because they lost loved ones to, to sleep. And, and we know that, God, you're the God who's going to call and wake them up. But those left behind, those who are struggling with illness, Brother Reverend Gregory Smith, Brother Billy Chun, God, I pray that you lay your hands on them, God. Help heal and deliver in Jesus' name. God, those who are convalescing, God, our seniors who are in their golden years, I pray that these years be happy years and not sad years. God, I pray right now that you lay your hand on each of them. God, I pray that you bless those and heal those struggling minds, those who are dealing with the many different schizophrenias, the schizophrenia, paranoia, a depression, um, all kinds of things. God, I pray right now that you speak peace to their mind in the name of Jesus. God, somebody who is without resources, I know you, the world is yours. The fullness of, of the world is yours, God. You can supply our every need by the richness of Christ Jesus. So, God, I, pr I pray for those who are looking for employment. I pray for those who have, are worried about their children. God, I pray you build a hedge around our children in the name of Jesus. Build a hedge around our communities in the name of Jesus. Those that are under threat of ambush. Now, God, when summer programs and our young people are, 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 are interacting with other young people and meeting new friends, God, I pray for safety and peace and harmony. In, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for the St. Luke Church, each member. God, I pray that you bless. Just lay your hand right now. I pray for every home under the sound of my voice. God, I ask that your peace that pass all understanding will permeate the place, God. In every room of that home, God. I, I pray that I pray that you just speak peace right now in every every home. God, we say thank you. We ask that you, 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 you take control of this coronavirus. God, you can eradicate it. You and you alone. Help us, oh God, as a nation to walk together. I pray for uh, the worship experience, the citywide worship on, on, on the 5th of June. God, I pray that your hand, 
that your spirit be there, that you'll be magnified there, that you will touch, heal, and deliver there. Bless the Mount Olive Church, which will be with us on Sunday, God. Hold them to in the hollow of your hand. We say thank you. We love you, God. We declare victory in Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, listen, today uh, a word uh, dropped on me, and I just want to spend about 10 minutes with you, maybe a little longer than 10, but about 10, but straight up out of Ezekiel in chapter 1, Ezekiel in chapter 1, if you can, if you can go to Ezekiel chapter 1, we're not going to be long, first chapter of Ezekiel, I'll tell you a little bit about the book of Ezekiel, and uh, we'll move forward with what this word is, and let me set it up like this, <clears throat> I've had times in my life when it seems as if God went on vacation. God wasn't there. God didn't hear me or God didn't care. And I, I found out, and, and then I've had places where I thought God wouldn't move, wouldn't come to some of those places for me. And one of those places especially are places where I'm guilty being in a predicament that I shouldn't be in anyway that I'm causative for my calamity. I'm the one that caused my own problem, much like the prophet Jonah caused his own problem, got into the fish belly. But he prayed, and that's very helpful. It was in the mess in the belly that he prayed. He ran from God until he got into the fish belly. And then he prayed to God. And it's, that lesson to us is just that I don't care where you are, how messed up it is. And in a fish belly, it was re fish stomach was really messed up. But Jonah prayed. He repented to the Lord. said, I know it's me, God. And the Lord heard his prayer and delivered him on dry ground. Someone needs to get on dry ground today. But you haven't repented. You haven't admitted you were wrong. You're still blaming other folk. But actually, you made the decision. Amen. So, in Ezekiel chapter 1, in the book of Ezekiel, is about a people who are hard-headed. God's people are hard-headed. And now they're in exile uh, in Babylon. Um, they, they're in a different country. And what the Babylon army did, what the Babylon king did, was come in and he took uh, all of the philosophers, the doctors, those who had trades, those government experts, those the cream of the crop, over 10,000 were exiled, were taken from um, God's people in Jerusalem and Israel and taken into Babylon to work there, to live there. In fact, now the reason they were taken is because they had disobeyed God. They had not paid attention to God. They had not lived lovingly among each other. They, they, their, their rich was taking advantage of the poor. Their medical stuff was so high, the poor could not afford it. They, 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 they were de deceiving each other. And God said, you don't represent me well. In fact, when you read uh, Ezekiel, God says his people were worse than the people outside of that claim. So and, and for us, it would mean, it would say something like, the people in the church, not that they're no better, but they are worse than the people in the world, on the street. They're worse. And so God takes them and has judgment on them. God sends them into a strange country. And when they get there, one of the things that happened in, I believe it's the 37th chapter of Psalms, one of the words in the 37th chapter of Psalms, that's an interesting word, and people need to know where it comes from in Psalms 37. Let me see if I'm right about that. Psalm 37. Um, Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Let's see if I can find it. I want to read this to you. Hadn't planned on doing it, but I want to read this to you. Psalms 37. Where are you? I'm trying to find it. I want to read this to you. This goes along with the book of Ezekiel. And as I as I get to it here, I'm on my way. There it is. Oh, oh, 137. Psalm 137. I'm sorry. Psalm 137. 
Psalm 137. It reads like this in the King James. Listen, it says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept. When we, were, when we remember Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. And wanted us to be happy, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Then they asked this question, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They asked that question. So, so God's people were in exile and in captive in a different land. The people of that land knew of their worship, knew of their jubilance in music, knew how good they were and how, how, how melodious they were, how they praised their God in song. And so they asked Israel, Israel, look, why don't the choir get together and sing for us? Israel says, and they're pitiful. They're in a pitiful situation. They say, we wept when we thought about what we used to have. And these people asked them to, you know, let's hear you sing. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange place? Here's the problem that picks up in this passage. And that problem is that they think that God is not where they are. They think that God has not only punished them, but God has abandoned them. But I stop to tell you the word is true. Those he loved, he chastised for their, for their negligence, for their not paying attention, for them not obeying. He chastised. And these, they were in trouble now. They were in a strange land. And in their mind, they think that God is not there. Because it's their fault that they're there, right? They made the mistake that they're there, right? And so now they decided that God is going to be like them, which is a big problem. We think God is like us. Whereas we may have abandoned people who mistreat us. We may have left them. We may have stopped loving them. God is not that way. You're his child. He loves you. Israel were his people. He loved them. He, 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 he chastises, but he loved. They thought that God wasn't there. And here's the thing. They thought that Babylon had a God. Egypt had a God. Assyria had a God. There were other gods out there in other territory. And they had a God who was territorial, meaning that they're thinking Jehovah is bound by the boundaries of Jerusalem, or the properties of Israel. They, they, they think he, he's not going to come out of there to come over here. And so the first chapter of Ezekiel, there's a, there's a vision that I want you to look at. Because in the end of the day, I want you to know, God is on the territory where you are. Or he can be on the territory where you are. If you just acknowledge him. And so in the first chapter, of the book of Ezekiel, there's a very familiar story, and you'll hear it in uh, churches as they talk about a wheels in the middle uh, of the wheel. And uh, it's in the very first chapter. I, I need to read all of it, but it's a lot. Starting verse 2. It says, In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kabar. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. 
And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and fire enfolding itself, and the brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof, the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of man, and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings, and their feet were st straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they had they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They burned, turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. And as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and they had the face of the ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of eagle, an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings on every one of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. That way you get a song, I want two wings. And they went every one straight forward, whether the spirit was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their Work was like unto the color of a burial, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their works was as it were a wheel in the middle of the wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went, and for their rings they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went there with their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up, from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth out over their heads. And under the firmament were their wings straight, one toward the other. Every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two which covered on the other side of their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the host of an host, noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, where they stood and let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Here we go. And upon the likeness of the throne, likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire and it had the brightness round about it. And as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in that day of, of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell down upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke. That's almost the whole chapter. Of the first chapter of Genesis. I want to talk about God's automobile. 
God's mobility. God's mobility. Ezekiel, this is his call. I said to you earlier that the nation of Israel in Babylon had no joy. They, they wouldn't sing. And they asked the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And what they were suggesting and what they were believing was that the Lord couldn't be there. The Lord couldn't be there. In their mindset, God was somewhere else. God was back in the temple of Jerusalem. They didn't know about God's mobility. Too many of us get into places and things and situations and it get becomes so terrible, so draining, so painful, so uncomfortable, so stressful that we feel like God can't get there. But what God does for Ezekiel, who's going to have to go talk to his people, um, the people of God, and tell them about their behavior, their conduct, their attitude. He, God is calling Ezekiel. This is his, his call. And what Ezekiel sees and comes to understand is that God is mobile. And I say this on a spiritual level. There's no place that you can go as a child of God that God won't go. Don't ever feel like you get to a place where you can't pray because God won't hear you. Or God's not there. Don't ever get to a place where you feel like, I can't repent for this. I can't fall before the Lord and say, Father, forgive me. Have mercy. I promise you, in this book, it shows a lesson. And in the book of Ezekiel, God is going to chastise his people for the wrong they've done. But he's not just bringing judgment and chastisement. Before Ezekiel is over with his teachings to the children of Israel, there's also an encouraged word that God's going to bring them back. He's going to make another king. Another king is going to come. And after their 70 years of exile, after their 70 years of, 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 of being um, in a different land, their seven years of, 70 years of being captive, they're going to come back. Because God still loves them. And I, I want to say that to you. God is mobile in your, your personal situation. Don't ever think you have something going on that God won't come to, to help you get through, to help you get over. And some of those things that are about us that we don't, we think God won't come to, they're personal. But they need fixing. We want to fix them. We fall flat. Uh, and Because cause we fall flat, and but we want God to fix it. But, and we need God to fix it, but we think God won't come to that situation. That's where Israel was. It was their fault that they were in exile. It was their fault they were captive. It was their fault they were in trouble. It was their fault they were in the fix they in. They are thinking that God won't come, but Ezekiel is down by a river, a canal in by the river in Babylon, and God shows up in God's automobile. God shows them that the bound, he's not bound to the church. He's not bound to Jerusalem, he's the temple. He's not bound to the territory that belongs to Israel. That he goes where he wants to. And when you talk, talk about the, 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 the cherubim or the beast, they say in King James Version, but it's, it's angels who are, who are connected in a way, and there's this picture of God. They're, they're God's automobile, and, and, and they, they can go either way they want to without turning. When you talk about, mm, there are those who talk about these cherubs as, cherubims as the four gospels. There are those who believe that those are the four, four gospels. Those are symbolized the life of Jesus Christ. There, there are those who uh, talk about uh, the, 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 the wheels in the middle of the wheel and they're set in a way where they don't have to turn but they can go any direction they need to go and then there's this um, there, there's this man this, this, this vision, this image of a man above and that's this idea of God sitting on his throne. Now, what it says is the powerful God, the authority of God, can go anywhere he wants to in any time as 
quick, fast, and in a hurry. What Ezekiel is learning is that in his call from priest to prophet, he's learning that he got to teach the people uh, to be honest about where you are and how you got there. And also, and, and that's hard. That's hard. It's actually believed that Ezekiel was killed by his own people because he come to them and let them know it, it, it's not your mama, not, it's you who been uh, stiff-necked on God. And when you read this book, you're going to find out that's what God says. They're stiff-necked people, and they will not listen, and they're going into captivity. They will not hearken unto me. And so what what the, the lesson is and the lesson I want you to get is don't get to a place that you think that God can't come. Don't get in a condition that you think God is not there. It, it may be a sickness. It may, may be, it may be a sickness. It may be alone in a divorce. It may be wherever. But but don't you don't you get in no pity party. You what 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 has to occur is we must j repent. Tell the Lord it's me. I got in this mess in and of myself. And if you like me, there have been times when I've told the Lord if you get me out of this one. I won't get in anymore. I believe that at the time. I meant that at the time. But in, in this lesson, uh, when Ezekiel sees God on this um, amazing vehicle, four cherubs, wheels in the middle of the wheel, wings covering their, their bodies, wings to fly, stretched out and together, and then God above sitting on a throne, and the wheels on it is showing us God's mobility, God's ability to go wherever his people are, to be a blessing, go where his people are, to make them victorious. Go, God, he shows them this vehicle in Babylon, not in Jerusalem, but in Babylon, not in the church, but in the street. He shows um, Ezekiel that I go, I, God, I go where I want to. Let these people know that I'm here in Babylon. No God can kick me out. I'm, I'm with you even though you messed up and you're in this place. And he, through Jeremiah and Ezekiel, he teaches them what they must do uh, and should do while they're in Babylon because they're going to be there. They're going to be there a while. But I just stopped to tell you that God's mobile. You can't get locked up where God gonna get locked, can get locked out. Stop thinking that you are by yourself. You're not by yourself. He said, Lo, I'm with you. I'm with you always. It may be hurtful. It may be uncomfortable. It may be inconvenient. It may be painful. It may be dark. It may be hard. But it doesn't mean that God is not there. And don't be like Israel did. Don't be like Israel did. What they did was refused to sing unto the Lord because they were in a bad place. What, what they did, they, be, they refused to sing because they, in their mindset, it was the Lord's song and the Lord wasn't there and they weren't singing to no Babylon, who, Babylonians who captured them, who'd wasted them. They, they they actually didn't they 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 they, they were sad and they wanted the Babylonians and we're not gonna make you happy with one of the Lord's songs but they should have had a song you ought to keep a song in your heart for good days and for bad days our, our history of our people coming through what we've come through is singing in the fields and singing in the evening and singing as we walked along the road, singing songs of praise unto God. I know the Lord will make a way. We sing songs like, songs like, oh, Mary, don't you weep. Pharaoh's army got, I mean, we would sing our way through the situation in the situation and still have joy. And the Lord shows up. He showed up in this text. He shows up for Ezekiel to say, I'm God, I'm mobile. I can be anywhere I want to. I'm with you by this river where they had their heads down, had their harps hung on pitiful trees, pitiful street. They were there 
It was their problem. They had caused the problem. And now they get pitiful because they get the results of their actions. And they think that God is not there. They want to go back to Jerusalem. But I stop to tell you, God is mobile. Worship God right where you are. Lift him up right where you are, right in the midst of your situation. Lift up your hands right in the midst of your situation. That the Lord, no Lord, I know you will make a way right in the middle of this terrible situation that you are in. Isaiah said, it was at, in Babylon that I heard the call of the Lord and I saw the Lord in his vision and he showed me on his mobile that he was mobile. He let me know that he was in the land of our punishment. Thank you, Jesus. He was in the land of our punishment. Let me just say to you right now, God is where? God is not locked down. God goes where he wants to. It doesn't have to turn to do it. Stop thinking God's not there. So we couldn't, we couldn't even sing. You better sing and praise your way through. Speak to that situation um, with the victory that's going to come. You have a mobile God. He cares enough to come wherever you are, whatever situation, even though you got yourself there. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. Stop feeling like he's not there and start talking to him. Ezekiel. First chapter shows us. God's automobile in a land that his people thought he wouldn't come or he couldn't come. God comes to his people right where they are regardless of how they got there because he loves us. Amen. Amen. God's mobile. He'll come to where you are and come to your rescue. If you heard this word and you need God to come into that place with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You need God to come in that place with you. I'm going to pray that he do that right now. If you're just in your heart, in your mind, say, Lord, I need you to come into this place with me. I'm going to say it in your heart. I need you, Lord. Father, right now, that person, your child, who's open for your move, God, to enter their situation with them. God, I know you're mobile. Move into that situation. That situation where they're getting bitter. That situation where they're disgusted. That situation where they're giving up. God, move into the situation. Because I know you're mobile. Touch, heal, and deliver. Let them know you're there. And you're going to do a great work in the situation. So we say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody might have heard this word and want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and be baptized. You can do that. If you want to give your life to the Lord, right where you are, you come right where you are, you can, you can do that. What I want you to do if you've never been baptized, never confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior, then repeat after me. So, Lord, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask him to come into my heart and own me as his child. Amen. Well, God, if we did that, we say thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus. We welcome you to the household of faith. Now, you may have a, um, been baptized and you were at a church and you stopped going and you just need a family. St. Luke welcomes you. Yeah, we welcome you. Come as a, by candidate. Um, you come as a, by Christian experience. We want you to go to the website as well as those who came as candidates. Go to the website, St. Luke Christian Church dot org. Follow the prompts there. Go to the join in and we will reach out to you and, and fellowship with you and
get to know you. We just thank God and invite you to the new members class. Let you know what we do here at the St. Louis Church by way of ministries, which ministries are available for you. Listen, we welcome you to the household of faith. We're talking about the Lord being mobile as it relates to being able to come to your situation regardless of how you got there, regardless of where you are. Don't hang your harps on the willow and cry. What you need to do is sing the Lord's song, even in a strange place. You be blessed.